parents. Um, so we didn't have to like choose one or the other. I really don't mind hosting and enjoy it. Um, my house is a little small for like a larger group, but that's been nice. Um, we have also so far two years in a row, like when we've gotten our Christmas tree, we've gone out to get like chocolatey alcoholic beverages afterwards. Um, last year we got like Bailey's and hot chocolate from a bar nearby. This year we went and had dinner and got, I got like a, I think it was just like a chocolate martini and he got an espresso martini and, um, that's been cute and fun. Um, so I guess we'll have to kind of see how things pan out. Um, and more traditions will probably come when we have kids, right? Okay, next one. Have you ever gotten in trouble or talked to at work for something you feel wasn't deserved? If so, how did you handle it? I'm a supervisor at my job and I feel like I take it so hard when I get corrected over small things. Yeah, so interesting question. I definitely have been talked to at work. Um, there's, of course, the classic story of me getting kind of fired from Sephora. And when I say kind of fired, I'm not going to get into the whole thing because you have to go watch the video. Long story short, I had quit. And then like a week and a half before my last day, or like a week before my last day, I got fired for attempting to use a coupon at another Sephora, even though um, I wasn't attempting to use that coupon on top of my employee discount. I just went to the other Sephora as a normal customer. So that was crazy, and I was too young to like actually stand up for myself. Plus, I was already quitting, so... Um, there was that. <laughs> and, um, what else? And then, yeah, my last job, um, I can't, I, won't, I can't get too much into it because, I mean, Sephora was a hundred years ago and it's not like really a part of my like career journey. So obviously, um, you know, my career is important to me and I have to keep a sense of boundaries and privacy, um, when it comes to speaking about it. But, my last job, uh, it was really great in the beginning for the first, like, two years, and then in the last, like, nine, ten months or so, there was a weird shift, and, um, I definitely had a couple conversations with my boss where they were very uncomfortable, and just felt like I was being gaslit uh, for no reason and I will stand by that and actually, you know, hurt experiences of others getting, feeling the same. So, it happens and um, sometimes it's legit and you gotta kind of course correct or, you know, you know, acknowledge what your manager is saying. Like, I definitely uh, give my team notes and feedback as needed, but not when it's not deserved. Um, so, if it's really not deserved, know that, you know, that happens too, and there's a lot of sharks and politics and personal nepotism and things that can go into um, the, the corporate world and like that. So, if you start to notice a pattern with that, I would suggest finding another job before they kick you out the door. Um, okay. How does your wedding planning compare to your sister's in terms of style? Always love to hear people's different perspectives on this. Yeah, so... My sister is engaged as well. She's my older sister. Um, 
she and I, so she lives in Manhattan and she's getting married in New Jersey and I live in um, Philly and I'm getting married in Jamaica. So she, you know, obviously there's a complete difference in our weddings because of the fact it's mine's destination. Um, we do have a decent amount of similarities but a lot of the stuff for us is different. Like, for example, she's not having a DJ at all. Like, she's having a band. And I would sooner die than not have a DJ at my wedding. I love dancing to, like, pop, EDM, hip-hop, stuff like that. Um, and a band would not do it for me. She also is more, um, I don't want to say more anal, because I'm definitely anal about the details, but she's like on steroids with that stuff and willing to pay like, I think absurd amounts <laughs> um, that I wouldn't be willing to pay, but also her budget's different than mine. Um, she likes things probably a little bit more traditional than me. While I have many traditional elements to my wedding, um, it's just right so that's probably the main differences and we've definitely gotten fights like we've actually never fought more as sisters in these in the past like year because of disagreements about like what's right and what you're supposed to do and whatever and you know I told her that what she paid for her wedding dress was like disgusting and ridiculous and she, you know, told me that she thinks that people shouldn't be sitting during my first dance and that they should be standing, like, for all of our dances. And I was like, no, I don't like that idea. I think that's boring. Like, we just, it's bullshit. It's all stupid. Um, but yeah. Okay, next one. Have you ever felt like you don't get along with your friends you've known since childhood because your lives are diff at a different stage? And how did you meet new friends? That's a good question. Um, I So, most of my friends um, are my friends from childhood or at least like high school. Um, and then some of them literally from elementary school, middle school, which is amazing. And I know that's not normal for most people. So, definitely though, like, over the years, the group has, like, shifted a little bit, and the frequency in which we hang out, and our dynamic, and who's closest with who, and whatnot, although, like, my best, best friends have really, like, stayed the same, and I've even gotten, like, like, the twins have always been my best friends, and we're still best friends. I'd still classify them as my closest friends, but then, like, my friend Mara, like, we were always close, but we weren't as, like, BFFFs in high school, whereas, like, now we are more close, like, so the dynamic has shifted. There has been people that we've lost along the way or faded with a little bit more, but still are friendly and see them a couple times a year or at important um, and how I really have made friends since then is, like, truly, I didn't really make any friends in college, which is fucking crazy. The only friend I made in college is Lily, um, which is so funny because I literally lived with her for, like, two months, maybe a little more than two months, and then I left the school, and, you know, she lives in a whole other city than me, like, five hours away, so, um, I didn't make friends, like, I commuted to college, so I wasn't there to make friends, like, I was there to, like, go, and then, like, leave and go to work, so I made friends at Sephora, for sure, when I worked there, I was friends with, like, 15 people at the time, now I'm really only friends with one person from Sephora, one person from college, um, some old co-workers, 
closer with than I might see her three times a year where I would see these other women once every two years or whatever. So it's like, you know, you kind of, you make a bunch of friends while you're at work or in college or, you know, in a certain friend group and then, you know, things fade, people's lives change, we have different stages of our lives and you stay more close with certain people. Um, I made one really close friend at my last job, still friends with her and kind of integrated her into my friend group now. Um, I'm really close friends with a lot of um, my fiance's cousins, um, you know, they're my best friends, they're at my wedding. Um, so I've really just kind of plucked people through the years that I've really vibed with. Pluck, 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 pluck. And, um, you know, I've got a great group of friends. Um, you just kind of got to build them over time. Okay. These are so good and I feel like the video is going to be so long. Happy Thanksgiving, Julia. I posted this a while ago. Before you and Tony got engaged, how did you handle people asking you about it when it was going to happen, slash if you were getting married, when you're getting married? Um, for me, that didn't bother me. It really didn't. Um, I knew we were going to get engaged and married. I just would be like, oh, it's happening soon. So, I think the only reason that if you have to ask yourself, like, if you're getting bothered when people are saying that and you, like, are really worried about your response, is it because you're really worried about, like, if you and him are on the same page? Is that more your worry? I would say, like, I knew it was going to happen. I just was, like, wanting it to happen because I was like, you know, where's my ring? I need a cute accessory. No, I'm just kidding. Partly, because I do love it, but, um, Okay, next one's an interesting one. These are good questions. What are your ASMR regrets? I feel like I could take that a lot of different ways. ASMR regrets. Um, so I would say so far I don't have like a ton of ASMR regrets. I feel like I've made my, I made my ASMR channel when I was an adult and fully engrossed in my career and things, so I don't think that I've really ever posted anything, like, that I super regret or whatever. I will say, and I got this question, I got this question before, I did, like, private all my, like, reviewing OnlyFans videos because, um, I didn't want to, like, have that brand, I didn't want that associated with my brand anymore, um, mostly because of, like, my job, um, and it's, I knew that I wasn't doing it, but it was just a little over the line of, like, what I want to be, like, talking about, um, and presenting, you know, publicly, so, I guess, I, but I wouldn't say, like, regret, because I only made, like, three of those videos, and it was, I think, maybe OnlyFans was more, like, trendy at the time, I don't know, I don't really have any regrets, I guess maybe, I, I don't know, I wouldn't say, like, posting more, because I, I mean, I posted, and I grew an audience, and I just don't know that it would have been feasible, or still is feasible for me to, like, post more and more and more with my job, so not really a ton of regrets. Next one is, who are your favorite ASM artists? How often do you listen to ASMR? I have honestly been, like, listening to ASMR on TikTok recently, just from, like, random people, just, like, for, like, a week of the five in the morning, and just, like, quick, do a little scroll to, like, go back to sleep. Um, right now, I'm not, like, really fully committed to, like, any specific ASMR creator. Um, but, I mean, if I have to give honorable mentions to people that I love in this space that are my friends, obviously Lily Whispers is my one of my best friends, um, Mads ASMR, and her sis, her sis, her sister, Grace V, have always been, um, really kind to me and given me shout outs, even though their, you know, channels are 10 million times bigger than mine, um, and like done collabs with me, um, Haley Jean ASMR, Soft ASMR, um, are also cute girls and friend, friendly with me. I don't know, I never met them in person, like, Lily is my bitch for life, but the other girls I just, you know, know through creating. 
always love your business advice and I know you know a lot about the business side of things, not just what you do but your full-time job. I'm wondering if you could share more from the business side about the switch to new website. It just surprises me that it would be worth losing the big following you build up over time on Patreon. Do you think everyone will eventually move over or you do, do you expect it to be a smaller audience but possibly with more money coming in per person with the new set of tiers? Great questions. Does the new website allow you to keep more of the revenue or something? Does the sponsorship for the platform make it worth the switch? Um, so I love that she was curious about this stuff because this is the type of shit that I'm curious about with YouTubers is like the business logistics side. So, um, for those that don't know, I mean, everyone knows I won't shut up about it. I switched from Patreon, which is a subscription, you know, monthly subscription platform where people pay for extra content, where I had always at least like 550 to like 620 ish patrons, which is, I will fucking brag. That's huge for a, a channel of my size period because I know what I'm doing on there aka like I'm not gonna make you sign up for something and promise all this shit and then not deliver I won't be able to sleep at night and I think so many creators do that they make their patreons they have big plans then you pay for it and they post like once a month and you're like well you promised all this shit anyway um I will. So yeah, I will say I make a big effort in that regard. But the reason I switched over, so there's a few reasons. Um, number one, the company is called Fourth Wall and they, so they pitched me. They emailed me a couple times letting me know that, you know, they were launching their own or they had launched their own subscription platform similar to Patreon. And I had done merch, my most recent round of merch with them, and had a good experience and really liked the website that they created for me and everything. Um, so I had a phone call with them and they kind of, you know, showed me um, the customization of the look was one big thing. Like Patreon is very templated where uh, I don't, you know, it's patreon.com slash. Whereas like with this new website, I, you know, purchased a donate domain name. Honestly, you probably can do that with Patreon, but um, it just looks pretty and it's aesthetic. So it matches like my brand in that way. The homepage, I like that it's also connected to the merch. I like the way it looks that my YouTube videos are featured there. My TikTok is featured on it. Um, and also, I will say, I will be fully transparent with this. When they first pitched me, they told me what percentage they were going to be taking, which 